Hello, my name is Pablo Requena and in this video I'm going to show you how to prepare the fingerboard before you fit in the frets so that you get the right setup later on when you string up the guitar. So I will explain a little bit very briefly what I have done so far in terms of the fingerboard. So you can see the fingerboard is already on the guitar and before you glue it you need to get it to the right thickness. I usually do it at 7mm thick and then you need to play in the edges to get exactly the right uh, width of the fingerboard. In this case this one is 52mm at the nut and 62mm at the 12th fret. And then also before you glue it, what I did was in the other side, underneath the fingerboard, not in the top side where the slots are, I did remove a little bit of material in this area here around the, around the uh, 17, 18 and 19 fret. And that's because there is a very slight angle in between the neck and the soundboard. So what that means is that when I fit the fingerboard in, the finger is gonna the fingerboard is gonna be relatively straight into here. But now that we got the fingerboard on and it's in the right place, now we need to work this side of the fingerboard where the slots are to be able to achieve the right height of the fingerboard in relationship. To the height of the soundboard because this is what later on is going to determine what kind of setup do you get on your guitar so i've chosen this fingerboard because usually when i do this job i do prepare a few things so that this is pretty much ready at the right height so that i don't have to do much work on it but this one somehow is turned out that I'm going to have to do a little bit more work so i thought well it's a good one to use as a sample so that you guys can see what I do but nevertheless each guitar is very different and individual when it comes to this job so the stuff that I'm going to do here to this guitar might not be exactly what you need to do to yours but hopefully the things that I'm going to do and I'm going to try to explain carefully or, or in detail what I do hopefully you can use these things these details so that you can do the right setup on your own guitar so the first thing that we're going to do is to have a look at the fingerboard and I've got this straight edge and what I want to see is how straight is the fingerboard and immediately I can see that there's a belly in here I don't know if you can appreciate but you might be able to hear it so there's a high point in this area okay so that's one thing to take into consideration and then the other thing that I'm going to do is that with this longer thing, uh, uh, longer uh, straight edge, I've got this mark here which is 650 millimeters. So if I put this in here, obviously I still gonna have that belly there, but I want to see what's the overall height in here. And um, I've got a couple of spaces here, which are the ones that I'm gonna use to get the right height here. So I'm going to use, first I'm going to use this one which is 3.5 millimeters thick. So if I put this over here, I can see that I've got, I've got more or less a little bit more than 4 millimeters. So I need to bring the fingerboard down a little bit so that I get just to touch that point. So knowing that that's what, I'm going, what I need to do, the first thing to do is to remove that belly. So I'm going to get my block plane. I'm going to set it up so that it's not very coarse because even it doesn't like to be cut with a very um, strong blade. So So I'm going to have a look and see, see what I've got here. And um, so the high spot is now come up here. And over there it's fine. So I'm going to do a little bit of painting up here. And 
I'm going to check again. So now it's nearly at the first fret. Whatever I do, I don't want to touch this edge here, so I want to make sure that I'm not going to plane this edge. So from about here. Okay, so this is pretty much flat now. So now that it's flat, I'm going to use the longer straight edge to see where we are in terms of the height in relation to the, to the sound booth. And it's still not quite there, you can see that it's not touching it, but it's very near. So what that means is that if I want the straight edge to get to this point I need to remove wood from this side of the fingerboard without removing much from this end and that way what I will be doing is bringing this angle down so that's what I'm going to do right now This is all getting very messy, but that's what you get with ebony. It's always much better to brush things off, because if you wipe them off, you'll be getting the dust into, into the lighter wood. So I'm just going to check how straight this is again. And now I can see I've got a little gap in the middle. But I'm not too worried with that at the moment because we might be able to use that to our advantage. I'm gonna see what's this looking like now. And this is very nearly there. So it's still not touching it, but at this stage I'm happy with this because it's just above the spacer so what that means is that I've got instead of 3.5 millimeters maybe it's about 3.7 and you'll see a bit later why I want to lay this so basically the fingerboard is fairly flat and the projection of the fingerboard it's more or less even along this point where the bridge will go but what I want to do now is that because the height of the strings is going to be quite different in between the treble and the bass, um, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove I'm going to remove some material in this area of the base of the fingerboard so that I create I create a little bit of clearance for later on for the strings to be a little bit higher at the base. What that will do is that to get the right setup here, later on, instead of having to have a very high saddle at the base sloping down towards the treble, the saddle can be a little bit more horizontal and the distance between the strings and the soundboard at the bridge, it's a little bit more even. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to mark with chalk the area that I'm going to be working on. So you can see that 
At the moment the fingerboard is quite flat, but once I've done this it's not going to be flat anymore. Because, effectively, if I can show you with a ruler, what we've done is that first we had a belly, like that. Now the fingerboard is quite flat, and then also we brought it down so that we had the right height, keeping this point fixed. But now what we're going to do is to remove material from the base side, so effectively it's like if I go and twist my ruler, and you can see what's happening. I don't know if it's easy to see in the image in the video, but that's the idea. <clears throat> so, basically, I'm going to carefully not to damage anything in the, in the soundboard. I'm going to remove it. Try to get a little bit less blade into here. A little bit more. No, a little bit more. So now I'm going to check how flat this is, but obviously if I put the straight edge here along where the sixth string would go, I want this to be flat. So I'm going to have a look here. And yes, it is quite flat. Also another thing that I can do is to get a torch and shine it right next to the straight edge and then if I've got light coming through I've got a little bit of light but I'm happy with how it's going at the moment so it's fairly flat at this edge and then at the first string it was flat before so it still will be flat however if I put the straight edge in a diagonal from one corner to the other corner, obviously there's going to be a little bit of movement. That's fine. So now I'm going to get the long straight edge and I am going to see what kind of height I have there. And then basically I've got this other spacer which is 2.5 millimeters and that is what I'm aiming for at the base side. So I'm going to have a look and it's still a little bit too high. So I'm going to carry on planing from the same area that I've done before. Which is more or less all of this. <clears throat> now the way that I plane it is because I want to remove more material from, um, from the, this end of the fingerboard than from here. What I'm going to do is to do one pass from about the 12th fret down, like this. Then I'm going to do another pass from about here all the way down. And then I'm going to do another one from about here all the way down. And then from the very top, but remember without touching the edge that would meet the, the nut. So doing it this way, what's happening is that I'm removing um, even amounts of wood, but obviously in this area I've cut four times, in this area I've cut three times, in this area two times, in this one one. So obviously this is going down. So I'm going to check again and I'm going to see if that is actually what's happened. So not yet, so I need to cut still a little bit more.
that's it because it's just touching it so I've got now to the right level there and I want to check that it's reasonably straight as well So the fingerboard is now at the right height in relationship to the soundboard. So what that means is that later on, once all the frets are in place and I have the bridge in place, when it comes to put the strings on, I will be able to have the right setup here. Usually the action that I go for is four millimeters at the base and three millimeters at the treble and that also have an influence into what sort of height of the string is here uh, at the bridge which is around about between nine and ten millimeters so I'm very happy with what we've done so far and basically all that's left to do which I'm just gonna do a little bit so that you can see how I do this I get chalk all over the fingerboard because now I have lots of planing marks from the block plane because it's very difficult to cut the, the ebony smoothly because it's a very tough timber so I've got lots of marks and scratches from the blade of the plane so I have a block this one I've got this one I bought years ago from Stuart McDonald's and it's basically a um, square section bar and when I bought it it was fairly flat but looking at it and after doing some work I realized that it wasn't actually as flat as I wanted it so I had to spend some time flattening one face against a thick piece of glass so that now I know it's absolutely dead flat so with this one what I'm going to do is to use it to kind of knock off any high spots that I might have in the fingerboard and as you can see if I put even pressure everywhere it's mainly removing from the high spot which is the treble side and the base side it's still there because it's a little lower so all of that makes sense it means that things are going well <coughs> So that's also another reason why, when I had the straight edge here, I didn't mind the gap to be very, very slightly higher than 3.5, because by the time I've done the cleaning, it's now going to be down at 3.5, which is what I was aiming for. 3.5 at the treble and 2.5 millimeters at the base. So this is a job to do carefully because you don't want to start removing too much wood from one end or from the other end and making um, uneven surfaces in the fingerboard but it's really good to be able to remove all the plain marks so I'm just going to go a little bit more and you can see that this is all fairly flat, it's a little low here so now I'm going to do the base side and all I'm going to do is to put a little bit more pressure in this corner but I don't want this edge to go out too much so the pressure is there to clean down into the base okay so I need to do a little bit more because I want to clean all of this as well so basically I'm gonna leave it there because you know this is just time consuming and by now you've got all the information you need to be able to do this one thing you need to bear in mind is that we've been planing on the side of the fingerboard where the slots are for the frets so make sure that you check that the, the slots are still deep enough to be able to accommodate the, the frets properly because the chances are that now I will have to go one at a time to check that the, the depth is right so I will get a small saw 
and recut them a little bit so that I get them down to the right depth again. So that's all I'm going to do for now here. I hope that this is helpful for the guitar that you might be building and like I said before, this is what I had to do to this guitar in particular. Maybe the one that you have, it's a different scenario, maybe you have to remove more timber from this end than from that end, that's also fine, but hopefully you can use the principles that I've described here to build your own instrument. So um, if you have any questions, let me know and uh, until the next time, thank you for watching.